the last Marvel Cinematic property that we came across was Far From Home. And that was uh, fine. But it's been nearly two years now and Marvel has had a refreshing comeback with the Disney Plus show WandaVision, which kickstarts phase four. I've been waiting to make a video on this, but now that the series has ended, let's get on with the video. On seeing the trailers for this show, I was taken aback because the superheroes living in sitcoms of different eras was something I'd never see and it intrigued me. So what do I think about this show? I loved it for the most part. I loved how the show begins. We see Wanda and Vision in the early 60s Dick Van Dyke show style setting where everything seems normal. But we question how they're even here because we recall Vision, I don't know, uh, dying. Anyways, according to me, the first few episodes are the strongest because it's the most distinct visually and tonally. The intentionally over the top performances, the black and white cinematography, the production design, they're all great. But there was this darkness underneath that lurked somewhere which gave the series an interesting feel. Wanda and Vision live a happy and comfortable life, sure, but we know something is wrong. And that's what the show builds its plot around. Abnormal things happen and people react to it in a normal way, which makes us question the validity of this reality. But then as the episodes go on, we see a different perspective outside the reality Wanda has created as there are external forces trying to breach inside. I think the weekly episode approach is great because the show gets talked about for weeks, maintaining its importance in everyone's minds. And week by week, our questions are answered as each episode ends on a frustrating cliffhanger that makes me want more. Which really speaks volumes about the quality of this show because I want to see what happens next to these characters. Now spoiler alert, so if you haven't watched the show and you do not want to get spoiled then I guess watch the show and come back. Some old and some new characters are introduced, along with Wanda and Vision, we have Jimmy Woo returning from the Ant-Man films, Darcy from the Thor films, and Monica Rambeau from the Captain Marvel films, which ties them to the overall universe, but they feel suited to be part of this series. They don't have any major character arcs or anything, except, you know, Monica gets superpowers, which is not a character arc, I'm not saying that, but it doesn't matter because the primary characters of the show are Wanda and Vision. I love how in every episode, this is... It's a sitcom of a different era which allows the hair and makeup artists and production designers to finally create some interesting sets. Plus, I love the use of practical effects in the beginning episodes. It provides a tangible feel which most mom films lack these days. The old school approach is really fantastic and well done, I feel. Now we gotta talk about Agnes, also known as Agatha Harkness, a witch from the comics that literally everyone predicted. She is brilliantly played by Catherine Hahn. The high-pitched tone and exaggerated expressions really fit with whichever era she's in. She was perfectly casted in my opinion. And I think mostly everyone agrees with me. But somewhat disappointedly, once she's revealed to be the big baddie of the show, she becomes less interesting of a character. Maybe some of the writing could have been improved to make her more understandable. Because on the surface, she's just an evil witch who wants Wanda's powers, you know. But what about her that's internal? That isn't explored and I wish they did. But the main reason I think this show works is because it stems from an emotional reason. The reason why Wanda created this reality. It's a simple and understandable reason, I feel. Which is grief. Wanda is probably the most tragic MCU character from going through painful event after painful event ever since her childhood. Also, this is a very unique way to show a character handling trauma. Usually, we'd see them in a terrible emotional state and how they change over the course of the narrative, probably shutting themselves off from the world and others causing more damage to themselves. But you never expect a person to handle trauma by creating an alternate reality where she lives the happy life with her husband and children going through different sitcom eras. That's just crazy and that's exactly what the MCU needed in order to prevent itself from getting stale. For me, episode 8 excelled in quality compared to all the other episodes till now. Now of course, I think some of the beginning episodes were some of the best as it was new, fresh, charming and somewhat experimental but the second last episode easily takes the number one spot. Why? Agnes makes Wanda revisit her past memories, which is great because it answers some of the questions we had regarding the show, as well as it provides to us the emotional backbone of the series. We see her parents getting bombed and we also see the Stark missile that was told to us in the Age of Ultron. We see how she got in touch with the Mind Stone. And one of my personal favorite scenes from the whole of the MCU is shown here, where we see Vision comforting Wanda after her brother Pietro's death. The now famous line, what is grief if not love persevering, hits us emotionally and we really see what made Wanda fall in love with Vision, his optimistic worldview of life. And it's even more tragic since we know that Vision is dead. Even the actors finally get to really act, 
showing the range of emotions the character is feeling and making us believe in them. Even the scene, I can't feel you, and the scene where Wanda sees Vision's letter added to the heartbreak as it really made us empathize with Wanda. And that's what great stories do, they are empathizing machines, putting us in the perspectives of different people and making us see where they're coming from. The reason I love this show is because one of my problems with some of the other episodes is that it feels a little too rushed. Not because I want to see more, which I do, but it needs time to breathe. But this episode is less about action and setting up other properties, but more about the exploration of Wanda's past and Psyche, how she dealt with trauma and the relationships she made and lost that only fueled her traumatic hopelessness. The reason I feel that this makes Wanda a better character is because despite her magnificent powers, her internal conflict humanizes her as it's something we all felt to some extent. In other episodes, Wanda's depression is hinted multiple times but here it is fully explored which is great because it really dives into it head first. I was a little disappointed when the show started slowly feeling like, you know, the typical Marvel film because I wanted it to be its own thing. But I get it. I really like how they played with the aspect ratio as it differentiated the locations of the series. It was a fun concept and it is really well utilized here. But now let's talk about the season finale. I'm afraid I don't love it, but I really like it. As I said, to me the strongest episodes are, you know, episodes 1, 2, 3 and 8 per se, but it's really well done. Seeing Vision and White Vision head into a Man of Steel style battle was, you know, cool for sure, but it felt a little impersonal compared to all the other stuff we see in the show. We again see the big grand CGI fights, which is what I've come to expect from Marvel these days to be honest. So that wasn't great. Vision brings up the ship of Theseus theory to the other Vision, which was a pretty cool not gonna lie, but then he restores the original Vision's memories and he flies away god knows where. You see Wanda finally become the Scarlet Witch with a new costume which looks stylistically impeccable and defeats Agnes, which was fine I guess. There are no ideological conflicts which is making them fight. Maybe adding some more personal motivation could have fleshed out the battle. This was expertly done in let's say Black Panther. Bad CGI aside, T'Challa and Killmonger fought because their idea of how Wakanda should be ruled was different, therefore they were in conflict. I really like the fact that Wanda is given a choice, to save Westview and its people or to save her husband and kids. When a character makes difficult choices under pressure, it reveals their true nature and so Wanda decides to keep the reality showing that she still wishes to hold on to her family. But in the end, after defeating Agnes, who I'm very sure will return in Doctor Strange 2, Wanda decides to finally end her reality after a painful goodbye to her kids and a final reunion with Vision. This was probably my favourite scene from the episode because it's calm slow, intimate and character driven. Wanda and Vision take a moment to really express their love for each other, you know, before it ends. Wanda knows that she has done some terrible things to others, but she accepts it and becomes a better version of herself. She then leaves Westview to study magic, which was nice. It was a near perfect send off to the series. Now it does set up other things such as, you know, the Skrulls and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. But it doesn't matter to me as much. The quality of the show's writing is what excels here. At the core of it, it's about a woman driven and torn apart by grief who wishes to reunite with her loved ones. And I'm happy that's what the show focuses on. It was an incredible journey. Uh, it's most certainly not perfect. I think some of the more well-rounded MCO films would be Black Panther, Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man, among other films as well. But this series does something new, unique and different by not losing the charm of the characters and a storyline that's deeply human. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is the real Mephisto was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And now since we're talking about Marvel, you can read the Marvel short stories I write on Wattpad. As of now, I've written three chapters consisting of characters such as Steve Rogers, Wanda, Vision, Falcon and Bucky. So make sure to read them. The links are given below. And let's talk about Wonder Vision in the comment section. I want to know your thoughts on it. You know, like and share this video. Please like share it. You know, it's going to really help me. And subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you later.